What's up? Welcome to a new episode of Movie Schmovie. This is episode number 401. My name is Steve, one of the co-hosts of the show. And as always, I'm joined by Ron and John. I, can I suggest something? I would love any and all suggestions. Yeah, start the episode, show off with a suggestion. Episode 410, we should only talk about Baltimore-based media. So like movies like and it. TV shows. Sure. Yeah. You mean the same thing I suggested a couple weeks ago and you guys agreed yeah. to? Yeah. <laughs> He's just reminding us, John. Yeah, but I said TV. You didn't say TV shows. No, I said anything. I said in oh, media. Oh, you said anything. So, I, but, but I also said we, we could do it again in four. I plan on talking about burger cookies. Yeah, um, us chips. Uh, John said anything, so it's it's fair game for food as well. Why do people well, it, throw it, burger cookies? Is so. As long as it's in media, are burger cookies in media? <laughs> I'm about to make them in media for cookies. episode 410. Mm. Are, are you <laughs> talking? Are you talking bad on burger cookies? Is what's happening, Ronald? I never got it. I never got it. I never got the burger cookies thing, man. I never got it. Like you've never had them, or you don't no, like them? No, I'm saying or, I, I. I said you hate uh, food that's really good. What is it, general? No, I said uh, <laughs> I would take a bite and say, "Hey, wh- why do they have sugar on firewood?" Interesting. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you got see, duped. I don't see, know. What you just described to me is a Clark bar. <laughs> don't make fun of things that jo- Jack Reacher likes. That's like the Jack Reacher bar. <laughs> he should have a commercial with that. Clark bar. Where's my Clark bar? Well, the cool thing about a Clark bar is your first bite, you're like, you know what? This tastes so pure, and I can tell it's really, it's really hitting my body and giving me that boost. I could, this could be all I ever eat. I don't need to go back to food. Let's, yeah. let's, let's decinamentalize food and just eat what we need. And yeah. then, like by the time you finish a Clark bar, you're like, have I been chewing on a Duraflame log? <laughs> and I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, there's no way to know. It's incomplete. That's like a Depression era candy. You know, it's Depression era when it was just named after a person. It's just like right. a, a Clark bar, a Bob bar. It's just like it's very weird. Um, you know, I think I was thinking of a Cliff bar. The, uh, yeah, the, see, the, they like, all have names like that. Or a Lara bar may have actually been what I was actually trying to think of, not a Clark bar. A Clark bar is like, you're right, an old-fashioned candy bar. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I think the Lara bar, the L-A-R-A bar is the one I was thinking of. Holy that is shit, like, that's a Lara bar? I mean, you ever had one of those? No, no. Well, I don't recommend it. I, I, I refuse to put Clark in my mouth. I was like, that's the, the takeaway here is stay away from the Lara the bar. The takeaway is is it it is exactly like what or you just would go imagine. get a stick off the tree and bite it. <laughs> yeah, or like, a, but it's got to be like a a, a stick, a sappy stick. Sap. Yeah, right. a sappy stick. I got you, John. I'm, I'm rich about what's with happened. sap. Um, but uh, I also wanted to get this out there that if there's anything left over, like if it's not from Baltimore City proper, but it's shot out in the counties, uh, the outlying areas, then we can do it in episode four four three as well, okay. just to make mm, it. I like nice. that. By so the way, if anyone, local to the city. Okay. Yes. If anyone doesn't know what we're doing right now, that's known as uh, area code humor, and yeah. it's uh, it's some you know that's for the that's for the the hometown homies, I suppose. Yeah. It's a very universal thing that everybody outside will absolutely get. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Everyone knows the four no doubt, area no doubt. code. <laughs> anyway, so look forward to that. <sighs> yeah, this episode is kind of an in betweener. Last episode was our big four hundredth episode. Next episode is our is our best of twenty twenty three list, which is always right. a big fun yeah. show for us so this sure. is kind of like we're just wedging one in we're just we're just going to do a little required viewing and talk about some non-required viewing that we've been doing um <laughs> ronald yeah. you want to get us you want to get us into required viewing uh your pick was mayhem or farang uh oh, directed yeah, by xavier yeah. gens yes uh the 2013 action french action 13 I, I thought it was more recent than that did I say 13? You did. I meant 23. 2023. I, Jesus, I lost my window. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. 2023 Xavier Jen's uh, action film. Uh, you know, it's weird. It, it, it goes between French, Thai, and English quite a bit. There's a lot of, more English in it than you would think. Um, so a, <sighs> uh, a guy who has a, 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 a dodgy past um gets out of jail and the people that he ran with still want him to do some dirty work uh and he gets caught up in a a bigger situation he refuses and then chaos ensues and the consequences i i gotta be honest feel a little too harsh for the crime rendered uh but uh yeah this this is this is mayhem which feels a lot like for for, for you 
people who are a fan of action, um, I'd, I'd compare it to maybe Ong Bak, um, The Protector, um, Into the Raid. I mean, The Raid a little bit, but more the Ong Baks and The Protectors of the actions because they take right. place in um, exotic locations, uh, a lot of open combat. Uh, and, and that's where it kind of differs from the the raid, which kind of took place in one building. This this is more like an Ung Bak sort also, of Also, the raid doesn't have these sort of long stretches of nothing. Of nothing. <laughs> nothing much happening or nothing much exciting happening. I mean, this movie yeah, has, yeah, a, yeah. has a couple of like, hey, like guys, sequences take that it, it, that it kind of builds up guys. to. No, but I mean, it's got a couple of moments that it really builds up to that are huge. And then it makes you realize... In my opinion, when I saw the title, especially the exclamation point in the title, Mayhem, um, I was <laughs> I got myself ready for more of a ride than this movie was, yeah. you know. But I do think that that style, um, if people are wondering what we're talking about here, because it's a French director, but it's a um, and I saw where the uh, action, not action choreographer, but I think one of the guys that that you know choreographed or designed the action, and his name was Jody Poyer, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I saw where he said that it was really a, constructed as a love letter to Asian cinema and specifically Hong Kong cinema. Um, uh, but that, uh, you know, the precision of the action scenes was different from the way we do things in a lot of Western action movies where they shoot a lot of action and they go through the whole scene and they choreograph it that way. It's shot in a much more precise way where each each part of the action scene is the little tiny piece and it's got right. that Hitchcockian kind of storyboarded uh, he said the big rule is respect the previs um because they've planned out these scenes so meticulously that they know what they need to get and so that's where you get and i think like there's a scene in an elevator for instance that to me is like what i came for uh, to yeah watch this movie and i even think there was a really short fight scene the very first moment where he's coming home from his work release thing and he gets hassled oh, yeah. and goes into like a building site i thought that action was really well choreographed yeah. and, and yeah. interestingly shot um so yeah, there's moments of that kind of brilliance, and I and I don't know Gangs of New York, which I think this show kind of is directly like, you know, the the talent behind it is related to that show. But I, mm -hmm. I have, from from the interviews that I dug into, I can, I sense that there was a lot of like on set talk uh, between Jody Poyer and um and the director Xavier uh, about what what this movie would be and how they how they were kind of constructing it from the ground up around the idea of these these type of action sequences and and specifically like i said paying homage to the 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 hong kong films and other asian movies that they that they love so well so tell me a little bit about how this relates to gangs of new york to you guys uh, i understand that show has really great action on it too i haven't really watched but i think it might be time for me to dig in I mean, it definitely you can you can see the, it, some of the DNA in this. I mean, or I don't know, I guess chronologically what the impact would be or the influence would be because you know, Gangs of New York is really recent. But and I don't know how long. Or this Gangs movie of was. London. I keep saying London. Gangs sorry. Of New York. Yeah, yeah. You tricked me. Um, <laughs> I tricked you into talking about. Scorsese. You know, like 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 how, how far in advance? Like you know, this how long ago this movie was made? So I don't know if it's like a direct influence or not. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, but I think I think. It, it definitely is kind of in the same conversation, especially in those action pieces. I think, you know, comparing it to that show, I think that show has like such a like dense, like the, the, the mob stuff is so dense there that like these times between the set pieces in this movie, um, you know, I think that's the main difference is that there's a lot of story in that television series. And it's because it's serialized, you know, you have this long season to tell this grown, I mean, this really kind of like, uh, realized story of this mob family crime syndicate thing which you know this is a lot more focused on like a person and their tie to it and you know <clears throat> the whole like trying to get out but they keep pulling me back yeah. in kind of thing you know um but i mean yeah like when it gets to the action you know that up close shooting the pullback quick pullbacks to kind of give the scope of the frame of like who's where and we talked about that i forget what show what, what we were talking about we were, oh, it was the one of the other picks that Ronald had. The um, oh god, what was the, the Wu Tang that was uh, kept talking about the influence of that one movie? Oh, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the, the, the what's the edited version? What what is it? Yeah, called? that right. other name. Uh, the Shogun Warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah, like yeah, yeah. like you know like yeah, you know yeah, it, yeah, Shogun has, Assassin. It has yeah. that mix of like you know yeah. you kind of up close, but I think that's one thing I appreciated about that. Like it would pull out for those like ultra wide shots where you're like, that's yeah. not a stunt. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a stunt, but it's not like a stand in. Yeah. It's not like a weird camera edit. Yeah. And Gangs of London does that 
a lot too like where you'll be really tight in that fight and then it'll pull out and you see the entire room yeah and you see like the shit falling around them and and this kind of has that too you know at times like the elevator sequence a little bit and um uh, I'm I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a Will Smith moment real quick. Uh, Xavier Jens, keep my favorite show's name out your fucking mouth. Don't ever compare your shit to this. That was it's not even close. This is a shit movie in comparison. I don't I don't. But I the, com- I know the comparison you- stands simply in how like it, it's now, just it's just in the fighting. That's I it. Saw, I saw he I saw that he I saw that he threw that name out there. Yeah. Was, I, I was so insulted. I had a I, a bad taste in my mouth just because like you're talking about a show that so beyond just it being what, what Steve is getting at is it's dense, it's well written. Um it has a real like take out the action scenes, and it would still be an incredible show. You know, it just happens to have some of the better action shows in the past 20 years. But the the show itself also is one of the better mob shows I've ever seen right. in the in the past twenty years. So to, for him to throw that casually out, like I want to make it like Gangs of London, is like being like I want to make it like you know, I want to make it like the Raid. You know, like all right. I mean, I, I, people are getting kicked in the neck, but I, that stuff irritates the head the hell out of me. You know, I think that's an interesting point because, like, I, I, and it's not just to this movie's detriment, or, and I'm not even really, I mean, I, I, yeah. I wasn't really a fan of the movie in general either, uh, that, or that much rather. I did really like some of the action stuff, but everything between kind of was not so interesting to me. Mm-hmm. But I feel like what we're doing right now, talking more about the raid and gangs of London and <laughs> things like that, I feel like that's kind of almost like a framework that a lot of movies like this, yes, um, 100%. either can either live or die by you know yeah. if you can say something quickly um like oh this is like john wick in a blank or yeah. this is like speed on a blank you know that's what everybody does when they describe especially action films yeah um but if that can be the end of the comparison and like you can focus on what else this other property does you know that you're comparing to the known it kind of starts to show you that like there's something there yeah, you know, sure. but I think the fact that I mean, at least myself and it, in general, like we're kind of focusing on the action stuff and how it compares to the raid or gangs of London. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we're kind of, and that's kind of where we're sitting. It's like there's really not a lot else that this yeah. offers to me, at least. Like, yeah, you could see sure. the comparisons and like they're, and in some ways they they could be accurate. But I think it's like it's 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 living or dying by that. And I think it's just like this is an example of like probably not not living also called dying and i think like um it just kind of falls into that crop of things where it sucks to be so comparative and like you know i don't mean to take anything away from people involved obviously making a movie's hard and especially think something of this like with all the stunts and choreography and things like that yeah but it's got to be more than just like a couple cool action sequences like john starting at the top being like in between there's really not a lot else happening in the movie outside of some generic thing that is just like recycled um but i don't know like yeah it 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 it, it had its moments for me uh because you know I, i'll always be impressed with like a cool stunt or like yeah, just a sure. really well choreographed thing yeah but that doesn't that doesn't like you know uh, that doesn't equal a movie for me you know yeah. there's like a dryness to the yeah to the, to the yeah. storytelling and the meanness to it and a real meanness to it. It's just dry. It's dry and mean. Like I feel like what made the raid fun is that there was some element of like unpredictability. But after his wife died, which is like in the trailer, it's like what am I? What am I watching now? Like what? I lost. It lost me. I can see kidnapping her. You know, like you know, yeah, like a video game or something like that. But just killing them. This killing her the way that he, he yeah it's just like whoa what and was Narong the name of the villain guy that like yeah like that seems actually kind of creepy and but they actually spend like you spend about an hour of the movie with the suggestion that they've taken his daughter off to do God knows what right. and then that we find out later that never happened which is like a relief but it's also like well why kind of similar to what you're saying Ronald why be this unpleasant yeah. why not why not kidnap the the wife and daughter. Mm-hmm and have him trying to rescue them and the same kind of action and then it'll almost feel like nobody or something like that where it's like the stakes are slightly less 
grim, you know. Yeah. Um, but but to get to the end and find out that the little girl was never really in danger, and then also this villain who's kind of had a menacing quality to him. He like total like he does so many f- stupid things in that scene that he deserves to get got, you know. Yeah. Like there's a like he puts the gun down. I mean, and I, it, I don't know. There's just so many things that make that scene not feel like the confrontation that you've kind of been waiting for. Which maybe that's a little bit of the point. There's like a what's the point of any of this quality to the end of the movie, but um. I don't know. It's weird to say we want a movie like this to be more fun. But I do think that when you talk about the raid, you, what you you said, Ronald, is true, the way the, the difference is, like several differences. But I also think just there is a weird kind of humor somewhere in the relentless, relentlessness of a movie like The Raid. Sure. And this movie, this movie has like almost like an unearned sense of like heightened stakes and like what you're talking about, that grim and gritty idea that's like, I don't know that we've quite have arrived here yet. Like I found myself reading descriptions of the story after I saw the movie that I felt like had more information in them than the movie did, like yeah, yeah, about yeah. what was happening. And then I was able to kind of put together like his past and, you know, what was happening at the beginning. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I feel like it was, it, it, it certainly had like a little bit of visual style. And also I, I, I don't know that, that anyone was saying this was supposed to feel like gangs of London. I think it's just that Xavier Gens has directed episodes of that show. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 Sure. So, but so I don't know what the outside of the, the sort of Hong Kong cinema, I don't know what the, the stylistic references for this were, but I know that they envisioned it from the action up and that, so it's like, maybe that's why the best moments of it are the, the planned scenes. Like there is some pretty ingenious, that stuff with the knife that's like in his arm and he's using it to stab people. Yeah, <laughs> it, really good. It's crazy. Um, and I like just how bloody and gory that scene gets, but yeah, it kind of needed a little bit more of that sort of almost dark humor of that, of that really gross scene to keep me going. And then the end is just bleak. Like, of course the guy shoots himself with the gun that he let, you know, like it's just like Oof, everything, yeah. every bleak thing they can do, they do. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I wanted to, be, you know, you know what it is. It's it's not mayhem. It's more like mayhem. Yeah, yeah. like meh, <laughs> mayhem. <laughs> I don't know why that got me. You got me, Steve. Hey, <laughs> I baby. I yeah. felt it coming, and you still got me. I got you. <laughs> you got me. Oh man, uh, how did you hear about that movie? I meant to ask you. Did you say that last week or last episode? So I, you know, I, I, I'm in a bunch of like subreddits and stuff like that and, and somebody was like holy shit look at this because you know right. i think everybody's been kind of hungry for gangs of gangs of london season three got announced but there's no trailer there's no nothing right um mm-hmm. there's uh you know the raid they just announced a uh 4k remaster that i actually have mm. in my hand Ooh. uh it's beautiful and i'm a, i'm honestly due for oh, a rewatch nice. of that one i'm like that's a oh, movie i have not seen in a long time you need to come to over and we'll watch it it's it's seven point it. one at most but yeah there's like this this desire to to see uh good action movies and somebody was like hey studio canal i mean you know studio canal puts out fire so people are like oh you know they they just remastered a bunch of action films this looks incredible but um yeah I, the thing is i didn't hate the movie and I'll, I'll probably at some point try to rewatch it. And I feel like there's a cut that exists that feels like it's less of what we're talking about. You know, I feel like there's a cut somewhere that that might feel a little less like that. But um, yeah, that's how I heard about it. A subreddit. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I'm always yeah. curious how things come on your radar, like, you know, things fall into our radar. Or yeah, into that yeah, bit. me too. Me too. Yeah, me too. Um, but I guess who who's whose pick is it next? I'm super curious. That's Steve. That'll be me. Steve. Um, and I was thinking about it, and again, I'm trying to like recently a couple, you know, within the few past few years, especially like in this pandemic time, I feel like in 2020 and 2021, like there were so many things that we watched. Like I watched so many movies that year, even though like the world stopped, but for obviously reason, obvious reasons, like we were watching stuff home and whatnot. Right. But there was a movie that like was on a lot of lists that were like, I think it was at one of the festivals and had like a lot of buzz around it. But um, it was also like a moment where like I was kind of in love with Winston Duke. And I was like, okay. what is Winston Duke doing? And why do I see him more? OK. You know? And I saw him in the trailer recently for um, The Fall Guy, the Ryan Gosling, uh, Emily Blunt. Uh, like action romance thing that's coming out in a couple months mm. and i was like oh shit there he is like i haven't seen him outside of a black panther movie and basically right. since i don't know get out um i mean um us and i was like i want to see him more 
and I remembered like there was a movie that came out in 2020. I couldn't remember what it was, but it was like a big Sundance buy, and it basically yeah. went nowhere. I don't. It had some sort of release, but um, I had heard a lot of really good things about it, and it's got like an awesome cast. It's just a movie that has uh, Winston Duke, who I love, as I just said, uh, Bill Skarsgård, Benedict mm-hmm. Wong, Zazie Beetz, mm-hmm. uh, Tony Hale. Uh, who else was in it? Somebody else I saw I recognized in the trailer. But it's a movie called It's a movie called Nine Days which is basically a movie about uh, a man conducting interviews with human souls, deciding which ones would be able to be born. And it's supposed to be very kind of cerebral, kind of heady. But I know a few people that saw it and loved it and said, like, I think you're going to really like this. And I never got around to watching it. It never got like a proper theatrical release. I think it ended up coming out on VOD or, you know, maybe some small release. But um, I know you can, you know, get it on, uh, rentals and all the standards, you know, sites that we always talk about, but I didn't actually check and see if it's available for like streaming. I'm going to do that at, the, at this moment, but um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I saw a bunch of movies this last week and like, I saw him pop up in that trailer for the fall guy. And I was like, it's my turn for required viewing. And I need to remember what that movie was from 2020 <laughs> that he was in that I never got to see. Cause he was in the trailer and he looked awesome in it. And he's like basically one of the leads of the movie. Um, but yeah, it's basically any Apple TV, Amazon, Vudu. It's it's basically rentable anywhere. It says it's available to stream if you have a Direct TV subscription or a Stars subscription. Um, but you might want to rent it otherwise. I don't know if, how many people have those anymore. But yeah, this is two thousand. Uh, a movie called Nine Days, and uh, this is a shout out to Winston Duke, so we can watch that and talk about him hopefully. Cool. <laughs> Nine days, Winston Duke. Nine days, Winston Duke. Um, so Ronald, tell us, tell us about Argyle. Argyle (laughs) transitions. No need for a transition. No need for a transition. Uh, but but yes, you were you were the only one. I was I was supposed to come. I don't know if Steve was ever supposed to come, but it's one of those. It seems like we can't get our shit together for a screening. Um, uh, these days, but I'm glad one of us saw a movie that is new this week. Ronald, yes. Yes. So yeah. sl- slide into those Argyle socks and tell us how they fit. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me throw some some movie names out there for those of you unfamiliar with his work. Lair Cake, Kingsman. Hey, he's he's done uh, uh the first two. I don't know if he did the third. Um also did kick ass. He's le- he has a legacy. He's got some X-Men. A- he's got some X-Men. Has some X-Men in there. Yeah. Um yeah, a, a dense, especially comic book adaptations. The Man from Uncle, I like that. The man from Uncle, oh my god, goodness! Yeah, it's it's funny you say that because the trailer has a, a the Man from Uncle sort of feel to it. Um, Argyle is a story about an author who uh, writes a series of books about a man named Argyle who is a secret agent, um, and come to find out that. These books, these dense books, also bear some resemblance to things that are really happening in the real world. And because of that, a secret agent agency is kind of after her to get the third, I'm sorry, the fifth book that will be released shortly to find out what the government's going to do, what this agency is going to do, where these secret documents are. And for some reason, this author has all these secrets in this in this book. Um, now, uh, this is a, this is a really cool sounding story. eh? am I right? It's pretty cool sounding, right? I, I'll, I'll play along with what you're doing and say, yes, that it's cool. But I had, I I've had, I've had questions ever since the trailer started rolling out for this, but hmm. I'll, I'll save them. Yeah. Okay. So I, I thought, I thought when I saw the first trailer that I was in, but I watched the movie and I was out. And some of it has it's to do how with a movie can do that sometimes. It's funny how a movie can do that sometimes, man. <laughs> I think it was trying to do a lot of things at the same time. I liked this movie until I saw it. And I liked it until <laughs> I saw it. Um, Bryce You're Dallas like the trailer Howard. was five stars, the movie. <laughs> yeah. Not so much. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard plays Ellie Conway. Uh, Sam Rockwell plays this the, the secret agent that's protecting her from these uh, this killer agency that's kind of coming after her led by uh, Brian Cranston. Um, Now that alone is a very solid idea, but 
there's layers to it that make this a lot more complex of a story. There's layers uh, to this cake. Yeah, so you beat me to it. <laughs> there's layers to this cake, like Matthew Vaughn's uh, one of his earlier films. Um, all of this stuff together kind of equals something. There's like a mishmash mash of a lot of things. There's there's a very big thing that happens during the course of it that kind of is a so the device of her writing this fifth book is kind of what helps the story along. So she's she's trying mm -hmm. to figure out what the story is going to be. She has writer's block. But then also Henry Cavill's kind of talking to her because he's he's like, you know, write the story. So this is cut inter interspersed throughout this actual story. And then there's like the mystery of how she is able to write these books with all this information mm -hmm. all this stuff doesn't work simultaneously and it also gets kind of like weird seeing them go between these sort of things i don't think it juggles it very well uh and this is what you, you know how you watch movies like you might watch the trailer for monkey man and be like man this was gonna go to netflix holy shit i'm so glad that it was rescued by jordan peele when I saw it, I kind of felt like this was one of those streaming movies, and it feels like a streaming movie. Matthew Vaughn, I don't even know if he should have put his name on this movie. Damn. It's Damn, fun, that's, though. That's severe. Here's, what, here's the issue, though. It's actually really fun, and I think that what they're doing, so, like, Bryce Dallas Howard, let's, I, this, this is, there's no body shaming in anything about what I'm going to say. She's a curvier woman, and I love that, I love that she's I just gave away part of the movie. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. Holy shit. Holy wow, shit. you just spoiled it for us. You know us. what? We'll beep. We we'll, we'll spoiled it for shit. us, but not for listeners. We can beep that out. I love okay. that. I love that we have something Holy to beep Holy shit. I, I, I didn't think that was going to happen. That's the first yeah. time. No, I'll be beeping that. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll be, leaving in the, I'll be leaving in the awkwardness of this moment, but I will beep out the actual spoiler. Okay. But, okay. Bryce Dallas Howard <laughs> is is a curvier woman who's 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 experiencing these action scenes like, you don't see very many people that look like Bryce Dallas Howard. She's beautiful, by the way. She's she's like one of my favorite actresses in in the space that she's in. Um, I don't. See... So if I were to travel back to an earlier, hornier version of this podcast, I'd be saying all kinds of co-signing yeah, yeah, yeah. type things to oh, you so right now, about Bryce, okay. Bryce Dallas thank Howard. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Bryce Dallas Howard. And and I think it's really cool what this movie could have been for her. It could have been like one of those like, holy shit. I want to see her in more action films. And this still may be one of those things, but because it's kind of packaged in Argyle mm -hmm. and then the cat. Okay. I forgot to bring in the cat and the cat is the big part of it. So she's also traveling with a cat named, uh, God damn. What's the cat's name? Garfield. The cat, it, yeah. Car uh, Odie. Odie's the name of the cat. <laughs> wow. So, what a twist. <laughs> yeah. What a twist. Uh, but yeah, the, the cat's also in it too. So like, there's like this animated cat who's in it that, you know, you know, how you kind of hit. I've heard this theory that if Indiana Jones was not in that movie, he wouldn't have affected the outcome of the first film. And the cat and several elements from this movie do not have to be in it. And and the, <laughs> and the results could be exactly the same. And I don't like I don't like that for that mm -hmm. for that movie. No, I, I, Jones is still I, I, I can go back and forth about that because I think that's an observation that's interesting about Indiana Jones. But yeah. I think if you get into how that's possible and why that's true, yeah. it's actually thematic to the movie because yeah, yeah. different things. Yeah. But I, I yeah, see, for sure. now, I'll get back to now when I'll go back to your premise now when you said, look, this movie looked pretty cool, right? Yeah. Well, I felt like from the trailer, it was trying to sell me one or two too many layers just that's... in the trailer. All, all you need for the trailer is... She's writing books that seem to be true. What? People are interested. Boom. There's your there's your trailer. Th then they added the who's the real Argyle. Then they added the, <laughs> C the CGI cat. Now, if you want to yeah. tap into that cat market or that pet market, <laughs> put a cat in your movie. Yeah. But putting a CGI cat to me sucks the the whole point of having a Yes. If you're going to have an animal sidekick in a movie. And I know yeah. that Marvel has done it, but that's different when you have like a space cat that's going to vomit up a, yeah. a you know, a different creature or whatever. Um I think that in the case of 
this that it, it bugged me that it seemed to be a cat that was along for the ride and that every time they showed it in the trailer it's doing some wacky thing that that reminded me more remember the um the cgi like babies and dog in the opening scene of the flash the sort of yeah. blatantly yes. fake and again i think that in yeah. some ways that blatant fakeness worked to, <laughs> to not make that scene disturbing to watch but um it made me think like is this cat really going to be in the whole movie and looking fake the whole yes. time because it, they, it's because if they thought it looked real they didn't quite nail it it's one of those times where i see something and i go yeah. i should someone should have told them they didn't quite nail it yeah. <laughs> you know this that cat doesn't look real and it took me out of you know what might be fun of <clears throat> watching Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard and Brian Cranston. And I mean, the cast is great. Um, the elements are there, but it seemed like maybe one or two, too many elements, even in the trailer. So and for it's you to too say many twists, yeah, because well, of I mean, the layers, that, yeah. there's twists on twists. So you mm -hmm. wind up seeing the, the thing that I said, isn't even it. That's like one part of it. There's four other twists that are just randomly plopped in the middle. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, that, that's the top layer of the, the spoiler. And then it just gets, twist 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 and then you realize like do i care about any of these twists? right oh my god do i give a fuck about any of these twists well that's so, how i felt in the trailer when they say the who's the real agent argyle and everyone goes oh my god i'm like Jesus Christ. You're, you're pretending that i care already yeah. and i haven't uh, you know I, anyway yeah henry henry cavill john cena those elements and, and of course you know like the chemistry with um Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell is a star, man. And it's like wherever you yeah. put him, you can tell he's like having the most fun and Bryce Dallas Howard having the most fun. And there's some 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 typical sort of spots that he that he put Matthew puts in his movies that you will see but it's not a it's not the best version of it. Like it's mm -hmm. like those like yeah. You know those like Kingsman scenes? Yeah. There's a couple of those in this movie. And you're like, why do they do it that way? <laughs> what are you doing? And I love his movie. So it's mm -hmm. like, but I, the I've heard there's some stuff close to the end that almost makes it worth the while, but not like that. That's not worth it. But okay. the, I heard there's a couple of scenes towards the end that were that were that were almost that level. But but even they said they're not as good as the best Matthew Vaughn stuff. Are you, how do you feel? Do you feel like that it's almost there were worth watching? clapping during one of the scenes. If you're talking about the one I'm thinking about, the, the crowd, see this, that's the thing. Like the, the crowd will love this movie. The fact that this will be free for someone is going to make this movie that much special. Let me tell you what, if this was on Netflix, this would do gangbusters. Cause it just has like that. It has some elements to it that you would still think were fun. I mean, Brian Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell, and then Brian Cranston as the villain. You know, they have that in trailer. You know, it's like, those things are like... And then Henry Cavill, and then John Cena. It, it sounds like I'm talking about a, a perfect movie. But then when you see it, it's like, nah, bruh. It, but it's free. It's going to be free on Apple TV, and that'll make it... Yeah. Yeah. Like it's 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 at that level maybe. <laughs> yeah. Again, the comparisons that we talked about with Mayhem, and it's like if the best thing you could say about a movie is like a movie it's trying to be, it's like if the best thing you could say about a movie is like it's free. <laughs> and really, it's not really. I mean, some people pay for Apple or right. whatever it is. Yeah. It's like there's something happen. There's an exchange of money happening somewhere to be able to watch this. <laughs> somebody, like, somebody. That, that's the framing. I mean, wow. Like this, this is a brutal. I, I, this is the opposite of what I was expecting because I had heard positive things, but yeah, before we record, I saw that because the embargo kind of lifted while we're recording oh it's like it's what like it a 39 like? it's like a 39 percent or something so i'm not tripping man i didn't even look you're not up. you're not you're not holy shit you know, I, I saw that before we started recording too steve and i was kind of i was kind of prepared for this but i also oh. wasn't sure maybe it was going to be one of those that ronald would say oh people are being hard on it you know but you're saying oh. no that they're not really being hard on it it also seems like it might be long like i have to say that when i was planning on going to it and I saw that it was two hours and 20 minutes long. I, I didn't so much think that sounds in too long for me. I just thought, oh, it's another one it's of these long. fun action movies that is is two and a half hours long almost. And it's like th that happens too often. It's like, yeah, really, 100 minutes is great for a movie like this. Yeah, it's long. You feel every piece of that long. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just get, There's a point where it's just like, whoa, this should be over. And then it's like, oh, they, they've just gotten into the. 
the weeds of, of the agency. And then it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, there's an hour more left. Yeah, so I, I'd, I'd say if, when it comes home, see it. Or when it comes it, home. <laughs> when it comes home to Apple TV, see it. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's going to look gorgeous. You know, those movies, his movies look great. Um, and it's so many stars in it that it almost feels like, how did he convince these people to do this movie? Right. Yeah. Wow. Kind of an all right now. A shock. Not all. A shock. Do not shock recommend. And all. I'll probably still see it. I mean, I'll, see maybe, I, maybe I'll wait to see it for free, like you said, on Apple TV. His Apparently, thing. I got a free subscription to Apple TV. So. For real? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. But you said oh, it was free. Yeah, so it was free. I'm going to write a very strongly worded email to yeah. Apple TV and be like, Ronald, on the Movie Should Movie Podcast, I could watch this for free. RJ yeah. said free. I'm probably going to watch it again. It definitely hash- said free. Hashtag RJ said free. Let's just put this out there. <laughs> dang it so um you know i i know you saw this movie ronald i don't know if you saw it but steve but we were going to talk about this when we didn't record last week and i just i'm curious uh who saw aquaman and the lost kingdom or the new kingdom or the fresh kingdom or whatever it's called i think ronald saw it. i didn't see it okay. no. i I, so, yeah. I uh canceled plans after i heard what he said <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I remember when, when it was first, when it was like still on the, on the board as coming out and the conversations in my house with my son who have, for years has been like the kind of, you know, popcorn movie buddy uh, of mine. So we'll talk about these things and watch the trailer. Hey, do you see the trailer for whatever? And, and he, uh, he was like, yeah, I guess I'll go see it. I mean, I'll probably see it. And I said, yeah, I guess I will too. We both had this feeling of like, we'll probably see it. And almost like, because we have to, because well, it's going to be out and we're going to go see a movie. So we'll go see it. And then when it got closer, I, I remember saying to him like, you know, I don't know if I feel like I'm going to see it. I feel like I won't make it out to see this one. And he's like, I was kind of feeling the same way. And then when it came out, we didn't talk about going to see that movie at all. You know, like when we yeah. were talking about seeing a movie, that that wasn't the one that came up. Um, so yeah, I waited till it hit streaming uh, and watched it then. And um, I don't know. I mean, I think that like I I just was wondering if you had the same thought watching it, Ronald, of not so much like this is such a piece of shit or this is like, oh, this is the you know, this is the end of it all. But it did sort of feel like, oh, yeah, this movie reminds you of that 10 year period where everyone felt like they were supposed to take these movies seriously, like because there had been this success. Everyone felt like they were supposed to care about shit they didn't care about. You know, and we've talked about the back and forth about what might be happening with the quality level of these movies. But I just think it's interesting that that it's it's like whatever you want to call it, superhero fatigue, whatever. There is this thing now where people are just not like I saw it and I was like, oh, eight years ago, seeing him in like the costume that's very close to like the comic book costume would have been a big topic and people would have talked about it and we would have been supposed to, to think this is cool but i didn't feel any of that energy behind this movie i was watching it going like i don't think anyone is putting this forward thinking that it's that cool or expecting anybody to really love it it just kind of got dropped out there um i mean for me i i do think it suffers in a lot of different little ways as compared to the whatever the fun of the first movie was but i feel like it's not even a mark of the movie's quality it does have its issues but it's just there's just not this culture that's willing to receive this and take it seriously right now so it feels rather silly and it makes jason momoa's kind of swagger feel rather unearned and like silly like it's like he got the memo that he's some super funny guy who can make anything work and and it's just not clicking like he it's weird he's like the weak link in this movie and a lot for me in a lot of ways his performance was there's you know patrick wilson finds a few moments um I don't know. I, I I guess I'll let you sound off on it. But I mean, like this movie was such a weird. It was a miss for me in some ways. But also, like it, I I can't I can't even imagine in the world in which I would have been expecting much from this movie, if that makes any sense. And it's weird to think that just a few years ago, this was the only kind of movie people were talking about. This is the only kind of movie people would see on the horizon and say, "Oh, it's coming," you know. And now it comes and it kind of ends, and it's just done. Like that's the that's the last gasp, supposedly. And if if this is the end of the DCEU. Um, then the last scene in the DCEU is a mid credit scene of Patrick Wilson eating a cockroach. Yeah. That, that, that's how, that's another, how it another ends. spoiler. Yeah. God damn it, guys. God damn spoiler alert. <laughs> Gotta um, beat this whole episode out. Yeah. I, I, I'm really disappointed that James Wan did this movie. Oh, yeah. 
That's great. Really, That's a great I'm way to, to kind of nutshell it. Cause I was, yeah. I was feeling that too. Like I couldn't, he was the only person that was involved with it that I thought like, really, yeah, <laughs> this is what how? you made. How could you do this to me? I, I, especially if sometimes you think I'm starting not to trust directors. I think, I think that's what's happening to me. I think what what's happening to me is I'm starting to get to a point where like when somebody's name is attached to it, I used to get really happy. You'd be like, okay, James Wan did the first one. The second one should be pretty good, right? Or something like that. But what's happened is the elements that made this the first one special may have been stumbled upon. Maybe have been one of those things where like, you know, you're you're earning that's I think that's one of one of the fights that really bothers me, right? Like you gotta fight for people's attention. It's really mm -hmm. important, right? And what this did was it it took all the elements that made the first one special and squandered them. Like what really made, you know, the the first one special was kind of the dynamic with, um, you know, Black Ma uh, the Black Manta, essentially hating the shit out of Aquaman and, and trying to avenge yeah. the death of his, his his father. And what wound up happening in this one was a little bit of that. A lot of him looking for world domination. So, so let me get this straight. So, your your dad died, which is awful. He got killed by Aquaman, or at least Aquaman let him die, right? Right. So now you want to burn the world from the inside out. I, I think we need a little more character progression, and like I need to know what the motives are behind you not finding him, not killing him the first time. And then she being like, you know, I need a little more power. But also while I have this power, I'm gonna destroy the world. I, yeah. What what it, I just wasn't buying it. I just wasn't buying it. And then why was Amber heard in the movie if you're not gonna have if you're gonna have her be a like a like a woman, like a like a stereotypical woman, like a like a, this is like a woman's character from like the 90s. It's like if 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 Armageddon is happening, why are you not out here fighting with me? You're a superhero. What is what am I missing? What am I missing? I, mean, I do about think that it's kind of interesting. I kind of agree. I think it's more so that they just didn't. There's not really any pop to that. Like she's there. She's like people she's that there. think there's some big surprise that she's going to get killed off early, or they've no. She's just around. She she gets knocked <laughs> out of action and then she's back. But I I know what you mean about her being kind of sidelined. But I think what's interesting is they did a little bit of that sort of middle ground that's maybe even sillier than the stereotypical sort of wife or girlfriend role where they don't get anything interesting to do. But like she does have interesting things to do, but they're just not interesting. Like yeah. Nicole Kidman is in the movie too, but every scene she's in is like a fight scene or a battle, a big CGI fight where she's got a few lines. And But I mean, there's not much of a sense of characters inter interacting. Um, and there's weird, supposedly funny moments that like, you just don't know. Sometimes you don't know if Aquaman understands what's happened. Like there's a couple of moments with Patrick Wilson, who you were mentioning, like the villain of the first movie. It's kind of like the recycled. They recycled the Black Manta from the first movie. And I think primarily just because the design of his suit is cool. It's one of the. Yeah, it's definitely. Really um, he and, and I don't mind that so much, but I, I feel like what really is maybe the detriment of this movie that makes it feel bloated is that like the buddy movie between. Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa, which is really kind of the point of this, doesn't get going until like a half, oh no, like really half the movie, maybe an hour in or something, is when wow. they get to the point where those two characters are trading barbs and stuff. And Patrick yeah. Wilson comes off better than Jason Momoa. He doesn't like come out without a scratch or anything, but like there's moments where his character is being, you know, Aquaman's like saying, like telling him, uh, well, I'll, you know, the, the cockroach thing has got a, there's a setup and a punchline to it. Earlier in the film, he's trying to tell him that he should eat a cockroach because it's like the shrimp of the land. And it seems like maybe he's playing a joke on Patrick Wilson's character to get him to eat a roach. But it also seems like maybe Aquaman is a weirdo who thinks that roaches are good. And you don't know. Like, 
and that's like a problem with the tone of the film and the performance to me is that yeah. I was watching that scene going, wait, is this a joke about Aquaman being kind of dumb or is this him being like, ha ha I'm like Bugs Bunny and I'm tricking my brother into eating a roach, you know, like, but I, I, but I don't know. I don't think the movie cares. And I think that's where like the kind of indifferent tone that you're talking about, Ronald, that for all this wacky stuff that's happening, there doesn't seem to be much of a clear sense of why we should care about this. But, oh, why is Mira here? Because she's here. Why is Nicole Kidman here? Because she's here. But there's not really any... It doesn't have the the weight or the gravity of us like going, I can't wait to see any of this. You know, it just felt so extra. To, to simplify it, Steve, you know what this movie is trying to be? Thor. It is trying to be Thor yes. underwater. So here's mm -hmm. here's the dynamic that they created for the second one. So it's like the goofy, the goofy brother. They're not brothers, but they are brothers. And then Patrick is like. Ooh, could he betray him again? Yeah. Because he was a bad guy before. Oh, he's sneaky. And then there's a part where he like has like a, a fork in the road where you think he's gonna do something shitty. And then he he makes a decision based on mm -hmm. that. But he's Loki. He's well, you know, Ronald, and you you're referring to this, but Steve, here's the thing you don't know, or maybe you know this. There's actually a moment where Jason Momoa calls Patrick Wilson's character Loki. Like that he teases him and says, All right, Loki. Yeah, it's no way. Yeah. No. He if he this is Are you like, serious? Yes. Wow. It really is a that that dynamic. It's it's like that's how loose this movie's sense of its own <laughs> purpose is. Is that it's yeah. gonna it's just gonna call out the the better, <laughs> more successful thing that it's trying to remind you of, you know. It's for real trying to be that. It's it's trying to be that dynamic, specifically the one in um the dynamic that they had in uh Ragnarok. Ragnarok. It was yeah. it's specifically Ragnarok, Steve. It's like Ragnaroky through and through, <laughs> like all of it. They even have like a gladiator fight. It's it's so strange. That's man. insane. That's it's, insane. It's, it is the same movie. Uh, so strange. Um, anyway, do not do not recommend. But and do not resuscitate. <laughs> do not. <laughs> You know, I like that. <laughs> and for your the, the, the DCNR. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. boy, yeah. I don't know when I want to get. I don't know when and if I'd ever watch it. <laughs> okay, it's you, weird too. Like I feel like Jason Momoa is kind of like having a weird mm -hmm. downturn. You know, like he's had like a weird like. Even though like a lot of people were like he's having the most fun in the last Fast movie, you well, know, it's like. It, it it's just like it, like there's a through line of like be, with the exception honestly of dune like everything he's in he's that same thing like it's just like turned up dialed up and and some you plop it into like you put it in 10 things it's gonna work like you know a handful of them there's then you try to go and dune yeah. and then everything else you know right exactly there's only a couple outliers here and it's like and those are things that work do like, i have to say what it is genuinely do i have to say what it is you want me to say it? I feel like I'm being like I feel like I'm being TMZ right now. Lisa Bonet, man. Oh, oh. He got divorced. It's like it's like his career was like this. He got really. I think he's sad, man. Can I be? Can I be honest? I think he is trying to readjust to his his life, and I think that he's he's kind of going through it, man. Once 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 I heard that that divorce happened, it's like all those movies are like. He's just trying to be happy, man. He's just trying to get along. I, well, don't I'm make okay me feel bad. Don't make me feel bad. No, 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 no. I'm not. No, no. It's I, 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 that doesn't excuse how shitty these movies are. It's just the. It, to me, it's like lazy. Like I'm so lazy, man. Like it's a it's a lazy approach to the performance. You know what I mean? Like I, like well, like when Chris Hemsworth does it, it's like a finely tuned comic thing that he's doing, almost applying like classical training to developing like a classic fool persona whereas with jason momoa you have that he's trying to go for that d d the dumb himbo kind of thor thing but i don't think jason momoa wants to be the dumb himbo so he's got to be a little bit bugs bunny he's got to be a little bit like clever and too cool yes. and it's that coolness factor that you guys know i have a problem with coolness but it's yeah. like it's it's the it's it's the cool factor like that you know what you, it is you throw coolness in with a guy like this and maybe no one's telling him no and also the last okay. movie made a billion dollars yes so why would they not think this movie might not somehow have magic even with everything that was going Look, on jason momoa has never been an unattractive person <laughs> because of that no one's ever checked him no one's ever been like that's not funny. That's 
what the fuck is it? that's that's not working you you're just tall and handsome and people have agreed with you forever but here's the problem they're hiring tons and tons of muscular people but you know let me let me give you somebody who could have pulled this off the guy that plays jack reacher i think he has like a comedic bone in him I think that he has some. He 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 wasn't in good in Fast Ten though. That see, was I haven't terrible. seen it yet because that's the only thing I've seen him in. You're talking about Alex Richardson, is that? His yeah, name? don't don't see don't see Fast Ten. He's he's terrible in that. Yeah, I, but, I'm I'm, wait, I'm waiting to see the spark, but I could believe it because I didn't think John Cena. I didn't think I wanted to see John Cena in John in Cena Peacemaker, so and then it man. happened, and I loved it. So yeah. like you know, I can I can change my mind about one of these big yeah. muscle heads. All they got to do is find the right director and the right the right material. <clears throat> but yeah, I think that people that I have a theory about people that have been attractive their whole lives. I mean, I mean, like, oh, really? Like women throwing themselves yeah. up? No, no, no. Jason Momoa had that factor. Like yeah, the, he's he's always had it, and I don't think that he. I think that those people think that they're funny, and and they're not realizing that people have just laughed with them because they're attractive people. I just come on, bro. Like it's maybe you need right. to, and I think maybe he could pull it off, but him just let me go in there and see what I could do. Let's make some magic. Let me just freestyle a couple lines. No, sir. Yeah. No. Well, if you did, you see him on SNL because that was an example of a similar thing where it's like it's just being goofy and throwing yourself in. It's like, it doesn't make it hilarious just because you're that guy. But what you're talking about, Ronald is perfect because that's the idea behind it is like, Oh, I'm going to go in and almost like he thinks he's pulling a John ham, like where, you know how John ham's ability to give into the comedic conceit is like this remarkable thing about him. But it's like, you're not John ham, Jason Momoa. Like you, you know, he has something different to tweak and to turn it like him being goofy does have some kind of weight to it yeah whereas if you're jason momoa you don't have the gravitas to trade in and so just being goofy like we said it just seems kind of lazy anyway yeah uh we're not trying to get beaten up by jason momoa i'm yeah. sure he's i'm sure he's a nice guy and based on what you said about the the split you know i'll i'll buy him a drink if i ever see him or i'll buy him <laughs> some i'll buy him a non-alcoholic beverage maybe yeah, even man. better yeah man uh, well steve you were in hmm. chicago and you saw some movies. At least you. Yeah, honestly, to- man, I I put my movie pass to work. Do it. I had all these points, and then my buddy, we were traveling. We never get to really go to well. Movies in general, really, I haven't been to the movies in a, in a while. So we're like, hey, okay. we're together. We we're, we're on the same block as an AMC. Like, uh, oh, you know, wow. oh, that's it's raining here, you know, at night. So it's like, or when we don't have a matinee plan or whatever. So yeah, we went and saw a couple movies, man. Um, and I'll just kind of go through them really quickly in uh. We saw American Fiction, which I thought was really good. I saw that um, too. I, I thought, yeah, I love Jeffrey Wright, especially Sterling K. Brown. I mean, that was a, kind of one of the surprise Oscar noms. Um, the day Sterling of the K. Brown has one of the funniest lines uh, of the year, well, the year, but of recent memory for me. The scene when he's on the phone with him, and he says, "You can eat shit." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Sterling K. Brown is great in this movie. <laughs> his, his, their relationship is great, and I think so that Sterling K. Brown is playing a character I haven't really seen before. So yeah, sure. yeah, he's great. I mean, I love him, and you want to see more of him. But that I thought that movie was really interesting. I uh, didn't love it, but I thought it was. I, I really, I, I really liked it. Um, I saw Anyone But You, mm. the rom com, Sydney Sweeney, Glenn Powell, Sweeney Powell. The, the leggiest film of uh 2023 it's got like an 11 or 12 time multiplier and still going at the box office which is wow um, it's like a hundred million dollar movie now right steve globally, i honestly, globally, I honestly yes. thought you were referring to how nice their legs are you, saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you mean a movie that's got at first that, I yeah thought, mul- at first multiplier I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 box office box office um yeah because i was just curious like i love rom-coms we've talked about that all the time on this podcast and um I really love Glenn Powell. Sydney Sweeney's fine. I like her in Euphoria. Um, I thought she was really great in that movie last year called Reality. Okay. About uh, reality winner. The, I liked her in White uh, Lotus. White Lotus, great. Yeah, I mean, she's got she's good in things, but I don't. I don't really. We I think we've said before. Like, I don't really see her as like a star. Like like they're you know she's kind of put up as. But um, this again, again, this movie is kind of like really performing well, and it's on its way to possibly being like the biggest rom com of recent years. Mm-hmm. I think it passed um the Julia Roberts George Clooney one Ticket to Paradise, holy, and it's on its way to possibly passing the Sandra Bullock uh Channing Tatum Lost City, or was it the Lost City? Yeah, Lost City. 
of Z or was it just called the Lost? No, City? no, not Lost City of Z, but the rom com they had, like that Brad Pitt had the com- a oh, cameo in. Oh, right, right, right. Like the kind of romancing the stone type of action rom com. That was Charlie Hunnam in City of Z, right? That Lost was City correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I got um, my, my, yeah, I Tatum, this, this, my Tatums and my, my Hunnam's confused. This was really just like curiosity. Again, again, I love rom-coms and I, Ooh. and really I love Glenn Powell. Like, I think he is a star, um, but this movie was fucking horrible. Like I, I was really, horrible. really disappointed because I was like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the trailer <laughs> is just a bad trailer. And like for all of the marketing about their chemistry and like all this stuff, complete lack of chemistry like Damn. so fake so marketing so pr um Damn. and they're both just so bad in this movie and i love glenn powell they're both just really bad everybody is there's not one really redeeming performance um there's maybe one or two kind of funny lines in it but it just it feels so generic like the, the, the script is ho- like just nothing really that funny about it like nothing is believable you don't care about anybody Damn. And honestly, her delivery, the entire film, like it, it's just I think it really exposes like her limits or her range as possibly being the star, like the kind of four quadrant star, especially because she's got like Madam Webb coming out soon as like this superhero action movie mm-hmm. she's a part of. So I'm, I'm kind of curious what comes of, you know, she's Spider Girl, right? Spider yeah, Woman or right? Spider Woman. Yeah, yeah she's Spider Woman. Which is- so. I don't know. I just left that theater, my buddy too, because like he was the one that was like, "Why don't we go see this?" Like I've heard it's funny, you're good, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious because it's like really overperforming." And I think people are just starved for something besides Marvel movies or big action blockbusters. Like a a, a, a down the middle rom com can still make money if it's good, and if this one isn't even good and it's still making money, it makes me, it makes me so uh you know disappointed that like you know there's not more offerings or better offerings like this um especially when we saw a good one last year I, I, rye lane is still on my rye lane's great i love love rye lane and i actually told my buddy about that after we saw this and i also mentioned to him like one of my favorite rom-coms besides rye lane is the one that glenn powell is in with uh, zoe deutsch that's on netflix the set it up oh um, i haven't seen that one. Oh, it's incredible it's such a good rom-com it's okay, like where they play personal assistants for uh Tay Diggs and Lucy Liu, like they're setting their bosses up. I have seen kinda, that. I really like that fall movie. in love. Yeah, that's really, yes. really good rom com. It came like out like movie. five or six years ago. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah, this is just a big question mark for me. Like, again, it's just a starving audience, you know, yeah. a demo, uh, you know, whatever it is theatrically that's missing. Um, it's like this is a and I'm not saying I, I you know, clearly I did not like this movie, but I can see people liking this movie. And it's just just enough to say, okay, yeah, like there's a curiosity. It's the one thing that's a rom com in theaters, so people are going to see it. You know what I mean? Um, that said, I did see a third movie that I genuinely loved, and that was The Iron Claw. Mm. Uh, Sean Durkin's uh, The Von Erich Story. One of us uh, finally it, made it. We were all three supposed to right. see it. I know, I know that screening. Yes, exactly. Like we bailed. Ronald was sent all over the four one zero and the four four three trying to find this movie she apologized and, today uh yes oh that's nice that was nice of her really nice man. um i thanked her for thing but yeah this this i had heard great things about it, it it too is doing really well for a smaller film that's been in release for over a month um it looks like it may make 40 maybe 50 million dollars which is great um but yeah i loved it um and my friend that I went with really liked it loved it too and he knew nothing about the von eric story beyond remembering uh, Carrie being a part of, you know, tw- you know, the um the WWF when he had his run there, because that's kind of the only thing that he ever watched with wrestling when uh, he was in there as the Texas Tornado. But um just a really great like drama. I mean, just with wrestling at the at the heart of it. I mean, Zach Efron is really, really impressive in this movie. Definitely, I think probably I mean, there's no question this is his best performance he's ever done. I mean, I don't even know what else you'd compare it to. Um because it is so unique and honestly like you know jeremy allen white's great in it um harris dickinson's in it he's really great too um home mclaney is great honestly the, it's just a really great drama and if you like wrestling know the von eric story saw the you know saw the dark side of the ring episode about them the curse you know and any of that art that legend of that family both in what they did for wrestling and and the horrible things that they had to kind of endure. Um, this is like a must see. Like this was 
this was a great movie. Um, definitely like had me emotional a couple times. Um, but yeah, I don't know, just a really, really, and honestly, like I was pumped because like the it was a pretty crowded screening of it, and people were like, you could hear like people reacting to the movie, which is a really good thing. And mm. um, it is it is bonkers like how like huge Zac Efron is almost distractingly in this movie, like how big he is in, in this uh, role. Um, but I, yeah, I would say like of what I saw, I couldn't recommend Iron Claw more. I mean, like it was so good and it's really sad too, because I think a 24 who we're all fans of and Ronald runs the fan club for, mm. I think it like is a, it, it is a huge example. Of, I think of one of their biggest missteps because I think their release strategy for the movie and their efforts to like really kind of promote it for awards consideration is like, I think it's a huge missed opportunity. And I've seen a lot of critics Ooh. that I follow on Twitter or that have podcasts I listen to basically saying that like, you know, when it was released or when they sent screeners out or made it available, like, you know, the embargo dates and things like that, just really weird decisions about, when people could see this movie missing deadlines for a lot of the critics awards that kind of are precursors to like globes and Oscar type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like the broadcast film, the critics choice, you know, all these groups that have a big hand in making people aware of awards contenders. This movie like missed the deadlines for all these things. And, like, I think legitimately there's parts of this movie, like, Zach Efron is so good in this movie. I don't know that he would have gotten a nomination, but it's crazy that he hasn't even been, like, mentioned in things. And I feel a lot of people are kind of banging that drum, um, you know, as a missed opportunity because, you know, you don't really see him do a ton of movies like this. Um, and it's kind of a bummer that he didn't get any acknowledgement for it. And I, I think he was really, really great in this movie. And, Ronald, I know you know this story, but this movie's going to fuck you up. I mean, like, it is... I don't it is think heavy. I'm ready, man. It is heavy. It is it is so tragic. Um, and my like again, my buddy who's like my litmus as I'm watching this, he just keeps looking over at me. He's like, "Are you serious? Are you serious?" <laughs> it doesn't feel like a real story. Are like, you serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude. This is what this is like. Some version of fucking real life. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a movie based on what happened. So they some things have changed, but I mean, in general, this is the this is the core of the story. Um. Yeah, this has been on my radar for so long. And, you know, like John said, we, we kind of all these roadblocks of seeing it. But like, you know, again, I saw that time. I saw the location and we had an opportunity and I had that movie pass points. So I was like, let's do it. And uh, I'm really happy I saw it, especially, like I said, with a crowd. The theater was probably at least like three quarters full. <clears throat> um, and this is a movie that's been out for a month. So this is, a, again, a movie that's performing really well. And if it's in theaters where you are, I don't know what the theatrical run is going to end or when it's going to be available on VOD because I think A24 has a different distribution strategy now for VOD. Um, if you can try to see it in theaters, definitely go out and support a movie like that if it sounds at all interesting to you. Um, but if you wait till it comes at home, this is like a, a, a go ahead for me, hardcore. Like I, I loved it. Mm. Um, well, no, Steve, yeah. it's interesting that I, and what you say rings true because. I do remember thinking this movie looked like if this movie is as good as it looks with the pedigree and the the subject matter and the performances, yeah. Yeah. And just the look of it and the type of film that it was that felt like an awards, like it might, might clean up during awards season. And it's true. I haven't heard any, like until you said it, I just realized I haven't heard mention of any of the, like, you know, Jeremy Allen White, who's got some heat around him. It's like, yeah, that yeah. seems like a performance that could be up for some noms. I mean, granted, there's some pretty crowded acting fields. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, this whole idea of like being snubbed or not is a is kind of a fraught topic these days. But it is interesting that what you're saying does seem less like a snub by the awards folks and more of a what happened to this movie, the visibility, the 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 marketing, whatever it is that puts a movie in people's minds when it's yeah. time to make those nominations. It does kind of feel like everything was there except for, th for that moment <laughs> where yeah. it was being talked about at the right time. And you do see his name coming up on a lot of those lists. Like it, you know, the, like the snubs, you know, for yeah. even Oscars, you know, it's like, I would have liked to seen Zach, like a, a lot of the trades are even mentioning like he has name as being a snub. But again, there's lots of comments about what we just said is like, you know, the, these deadlines are, you know, in December, like before this movie even came out and like before an embargo lifts and things like that. So it's like, 
they didn't do themselves any favors. I don't know what their real contenders are this year for awards. I know they have some movies that are in the Oscar nomination pool, but it does feel like this is one that may have had more attention is, you know, again, especially in some acting categories that it's just, it just stands out to me as being a miss. I don't know. Like there's something special about a movie. It's it's like, I don't know. Like Ronald said, like you can't make it up like it's, or it feels made up or whatever. Like, right. This is like wrestling, like royalty, you know, uh, no matter what wrestling you've followed, like what level of wrestling you've followed. It's like you probably have heard of a Von Eric in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And, and, and the legacy of that family and on the spectrum of good and bad. And it's just like this movie really, it does, it does a great job of like really kind of allowing you to see how hard it was for this family to celebrate any achievements they ever had um, when it's just riddled with such tragedy. Um, but yeah, again, I, that not to be, it, it's great. Like I loved it. Like if it, it's a downer in some ways, but it's also like, it's, it's also an impressive uh, drama and uh, some, with some great performances. So yeah, it's called the iron claw and it's still playing relatively wide uh, as we record this. <laughs> Um, did you guys watch anything else you want to throw out there? I feel like I've watched oh. a few things that I think I might hold on to for next week's discussion when we talk about our favorite movies. Ooh, okay. year. fancy same. pants. Okay, same, same. Okay, since you're saying that, I won't talk about one of the movies I saw. But I, are, okay, are we good. going to do a best TV of the last year as well, or some way I of talking about recent good television or something? <sighs> sure. Because that, that that could also save me from having to talk about uh, something right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I so... guess I. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, I was just going to say because I I I had just one movie that I saw that I have seen people talking about that I wanted to mention, and it kind of seems like it would be a shoe in for this for for the you you guys you would probably love it too, but I'm sure it's on your radar as well. Um, have you watched The Greatest Night in Pop on Netflix? No, I cute. I was just about to say that is the last one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you need to see it. It's like, I just, it's just. I, I watched it last night. It's incredible. It's so watchable. It's like, so, in, like, you just realize how much investment you have in some way. Whatever your take mm. is, that room full of people, the, the list of people who were standing there. I mean, everybody knows, you know, uh, Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson working on the song, Quincy Jones producing the song, Stevie Wonder kind of having a little bit of FOMO, uh, not getting a chance to write on the song and still kind of wanting to shape the song, yeah, uh, but yeah, being yeah. a genius and helping people out. Then you get this, the pop stars they were bringing in, people like uh, Tina Turner and Billy Joel and um, Al Jarreau and... Uh, uh, Literally everybody. <laughs> everybody, like 47, I think, people singing at one time, including yeah, Dan crazy. Aykroyd, who was seemingly there just because he's Dan Aykroyd, but that's <laughs> great too. Um, it's just so, like, this couldn't happen again because pop stars are different now. Like, I'm not saying anything about the quality of music or the quality of the talent. I'm just saying yeah. that the when you see this movie, you feel a certain kind of, an, an era that I don't think can ever come back in like in pop music. And like when pop radio was this, I mean, when you had Bruce, Springs, Bruce Springsteen and Celine Dion, uh, sort of in the room together and they were all together under the under the it's pop you know they were yeah. all radio everybody like so many people in this room who know what it feels like to work on a hit and everybody's there working into the wee hours recording their parts i mean i was fascinated with the footage they had but of course they had 50 cameras going that day and they they captured every minute because they knew when they were doing it that this couldn't happen again or wouldn't happen again and yeah. ronald there's a little sign that quincy jones put up on the studio that said check your ego at the door um and everyone, I mean, most people like, okay, Tina Turner is going to come in and say, check my ego at the door, whatever, fuck you. But not when it's Quincy Jones saying it. And not For when sure. it's Lionel Richie, like running the session. And not when it's Michael Jackson, who, having written the song, like coaxing the lyrics through. And the way that they make these decisions, like Smokey Robinson makes a decision that you see the footage of him suggesting, let's just say this right there. And it's one of the hooks of the song. I mean, it's not like a lyric he invented, but he has a suggestion that is totally one of the parts of the song that totally works. You remember, yeah. And it's just full of little moments like that, where like this this thing that's become iconic, you see what a struggle it was for Bob Dylan, who's not this type of golden throat, for him to like 
be in the room with all these people and then find a way to perform his sort of thing and then have a very strong showing. And then even someone like Bruce Springsteen, who has the pipes you expect him to have, but like it's late in the night and he's just gotten off tour. um, And can he do it? I don't know. Everybody was really giving it their all. And some people are just so smooth. Like Willie Nelson, every time he did his part, it was so perfect. I don't know. I, I just love seeing that level of talent. Um, and this is one of those documentaries every now and then a music doc comes out that makes you think about what real talent is. Um, and, uh, I feel like, yeah, I caught a lot of warmth, not, and I really don't think it's member berries, nostalgia shit. This is what we're talking about. Star power. We're talking about like, you don't have to like the music of any of these people to understand how monumental it is to have like Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper kind of hanging out like chatting while uh you know while celine dion is there while while al yeah. is there while uh, harry belafonte is there um, one of the best moments is al kind of leading an impromptu uh, version of singing the banana song yeah. uh to to kind of honor harry, harry belafonte and so you've got that room full of people singing that song and kind of getting into it it's just there's some magic yeah it's just it's just magical so it's also um, like a time that like beyond saying this could never happen again for any variety of reasons but like there's a part in the doc where they're talking about like the connectivity of the world or of the industry, you know, they're talking about this is pre-internet, pre-tech, pre-phones, all this stuff. And it's like, pop out a Rolodex. Who do you know? And like, how do you coordinate getting everybody in one place on one night at one time? And like, it's like serendipitous to say Lionel Richie is like kind of one of the spearheads of this effort. And that night he's hosting the AMAs and And like, and he cleans up. Right, 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 right. So it's like, Okay, it's like how more how much like how much better of an opportunity is there to say hey can you take lead on this oh the best opportunity to do this is at the amas where 80 percent of the people we want to be there are here already in town you know it's just like it, it just feels like you know the, the the moment it was like you know it was meant to be in in a way you know like if it was going to happen it's going to happen now it can only happen now the willingness of everybody to do it now is like It's just, you can't capture that again. And I feel like, you know, especially in today's world, like how connected everything is in ways makes everything less connected. And it's like, it's, that's the irony of like how much we rely on the connectivity. Um, But yeah, that, that documentary was amazing. And I I gotta say like, you know, never, how do I say this? Um, Wherever you, however you feel about Michael Jackson, uh, you know, and however you right. uh, want to approach co- having a conversation about Michael Jackson um, at that moment in time, at that event and people with a video camera filming him, like sing his lines. I I mean, like I kind of got goosebumps a little bit watching yeah. it. And I'm just like, that is like, that is, that's an icon. And he's, that, he's that practicing. capturing yeah, it's just like how he's like you can see when he pulls his glasses down and he's like looking at the 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 monitor or he's looking at the words and you know, I don't know, it's hard it's hard to put in the words honestly. Like I just felt like that moment specifically of of all the other amazing things that John has had kind of alluded to in the doc in terms of the footage they have watching Michael Jackson there before everybody else comes over there from the AMAs and he's doing his part and you hear him singing the lines that you know, you, you know his part from the song. Mm-hmm. Um, a song that he wrote or co-wrote or had a, a large hand in writing. And uh, yeah, honestly, to be, I, I had, I got goosebumps when, when it's like showing him record it and the guy running the lights or running the sound, whoever they have talking over, he's like, I've never heard something so amazing or beautiful or like whatever the word he used was like, I never heard a voice sound so beautiful. Like mm-hmm. it was just like, I believe it. Cause I'm watching it, you know, <laughs> 40 years later like with a lot I of baggage too and yeah, like you said exactly I, i'm glad you said that steve because that is one of the other points i wanted to make was that the michael jackson of it all you you might think oh how am i going to feel about this it somehow makes you able to think about the pop star yes the, geni- the, the music genius whatever somehow this movie manages to exist in a space where it doesn't feel like it's avoiding anybody's personal shit yeah but it's just not mentioning it it just doesn't come up in the in the context of this night, you know, but yeah. yes, hearing his voice, hearing him sing the part that he's going to sing almost. That was the other thing. All of them. Like you hear Cindy Lauper who has that awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. well, well, you hear her sing like three or four different versions and she doesn't quite have it yet. And you're like, she's going to get that. You know, she's going to get there. Yeah. 
Um, and the one other thing I wanted to say that I just, one of my favorite moments that I wrote down, it's something Billy Joel says is that he says, you're in this room full of people and you look over and then Ray Charles walks in. He said, that's like watching the Statue of Liberty walk in. Yeah. 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 I thought that was such a great, I mean, cause that's, that's the what perspective, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. Just like, and it's, it's like insane. that even those stars are having like the sort of charge of like, of being in the room with those people, but also recognizing what it means to be one of the people in the room with those people. Yeah. And like, like there's a part where uh, I forget who it is. It might be Smokey Robinson that said mm -hmm. he's one of the only people that could like talk back to Michael Jackson about a lyric they're about to sing, you know, but yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he's like, I don't know about that. He kind of says, I don't know. It's like it, you recognize what it means to be at that level and to have that yeah. kind of respect that these people have for each other. Um, and, you know, whatever you think of We Are the World, uh, th there's a moment where Ray Charles is playing it on piano and it sounds the coolest it's ever sounded. I'd almost like yeah. to hear that version. <laughs> um, but it's not about how great the song is. It's about even seeing them talk about how they arranged it and how they thought about the different voices and like who should come in when all that stuff gets covered. And it, it almost reminds me of the the Beatles get back documentary yeah. where it's just like you've got a lot of footage and here's an interesting cultural event that now feels increasingly special to have this footage so let's actually like dig into these minor details of like they're working out ronald like phrasings like like what what were, are you going to say better or brighter here you know those yeah. kind of choices are so interesting to me so um yeah uh i think i mean i feel like people have been talking about this because it is that super watchable doc i, don't, I can't i don't know who this isn't for <laughs> yeah and, and to say that's on netflix too it's it's uh yeah. Like Ronald said, it's one of those free services. It's free. Well, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely. Yeah, I was. I'm glad you brought it up because that was going to be the last one I mentioned at the end. Quickly, like uh, I, just, I literally watched it last night when I went to bed, and because uh, yeah, it was coming up when like a lot of people were reviewing it and talking about it. And even recently, we talked about like the movies, like you know, music movies, you know, production, you know, some movies about music being made, you know, more narrative type features, but like this kind of thing is like. You, you always love to see like, you know, the, the insightful, like how it's made stuff like John was getting at. Um, I wanted to mention one other point when Lionel Richie's kind of recounting like how they were starting to write the song. He was like, you know, Michael doesn't play anything. Mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't play any, any instruments. And he's like, so he's just got like cassette tapes of on cassette tapes, like layering the different parts of him just humming it into like a tape deck. And, and, you know, so he's like, and Lionel's describing like, listening to them in tandem and being like it's just like it's maddening how like genius it is that he could do it and mm. break it apart in parts like that without being able to play any of it like he just heard it and, and that kind of stuff blows my mind like it's mm -hmm. insane especially because you think about the time like there's no like stacks of stacks of cassette tapes that you would just play on top yeah. of each other uh, it's just wild wild stuff like i love that kind of stuff mm -hmm. wow. wow but yeah it's uh was it called the best the greatest night greatest in night in pop yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's on netflix now definitely definitely it's only like an hour 40 minutes or so it's great great music doc you got to check it out mm. Um, mm. i saw, mm. I saw mm -hmm. amazon mm. amazon prime's mr and mrs smith oh, oh how was that yeah okay so this ain't two, your two mama. of our favorite stars this ain't your this. mama's mr and mrs smith you know yeah. I'd never seen Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Smith. Uh, uh, so Aaron, no, me, it's one of Wait, Aaron's. Neither of you have seen the, the one with Brad Pitt? No, no, no. Wow. Yeah, it's one of my mom's a... favorite movies, and she owns it, and she used to talk about how, how cute it was. Aaron. But I, I never what? watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom's favorite movie that she owns and called well, cute. One of her favorite movies because she she it's one of those mom movies that she you know how your yeah, mom has a movie she is. watches every five minutes <laughs> somehow she's wow. seen it a bunch. Yeah, yeah, it's but it's, also cute is just my mom's word for like she'll say that was darling or that was yeah. cute when she just means it was and she enjoyed it. You know, I don't know. This is um yeah, so I just I just seen it for the first time like. <laughs> uh two weeks before i saw the 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 donald glover created uh one so you know i was fresh off of that i thought that was a fun movie it's it, mr and mrs smith is a fun movie um it feels a lot heavier now especially being the first time seeing it is like as a 40 year old man in a marriage and seeing like these like <laughs> real heavy ideas if i saw this 20 years ago i wouldn't have thought about all the heaviness about that. And, Ronald, and, yeah. Ronald, I haven't seen the movie, but don't you think they should have gotten some attractive people to star in it? They should have. 
<laughs> they should have got some really attractive people who were just like missed opportunities, sexually charged constantly, and just like. So so attracted to each other that they leave each other's respective relationships. Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's the real takeaway from the pop yeah. culture for Mr. Yeah. Mrs. Smith. So then so then I'm fresh off I'm fresh off of that. And then I'm getting into something that is a lot more grounded in like real relationships and like I I'm just meeting a new person. How the fuck do we get along? And why did we get into something where we don't ha- we don't ever talk to our families again? You know, it's it, yeah. it dives into really heavy shit like views on kids and stuff like that so it's a little different because they explain the backstory of it but it was essentially what happens is these two um get into this program that's say who they are if, uh, in case people don't know yeah donald glover and uh maya <clears throat> erskine erskine or erskine yeah yeah so it's written it's written by francesca sloan and donald glover Frequent collaborators think Atlanta, think uh, you know the, the 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 one that was Buzz or B the B the B one the one that was on Amazon Prime that was about the kind of Beyonce obsessive. Oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. Which was you know it was it was solid enough, but this I really really enjoyed this this show. It, it really tackles a lot of the stuff that. I, you wouldn't think that they tackle in a in a spy show, and it works somehow. And and what it becomes essentially is like who is going to show up in this episode? It it really is using these actors in ways that I just hadn't seen before. There's one that I want to say so bad that I I they're so good together on screen. Donald Glover is so good on screen with this person that I kind of wish that she was Jane. That's how good they are together on the screen. Uh, I was like, holy shit, like, what? why is this not happening? And he actually said really recently in the news that he would collaborate with this person. And I kind of got why. But um, Maya and Donald are so fucking good together. It's weird because it really is grounded in this, like, they, they, they both have shit. They both have heavy shit. Personality issues that are leading them into this whole yeah. I want to kill people for a living thing and when they clash it's like a real relationship because it's because they're trying to weave around killing people <laughs> while also like trying to figure out who each other are and how they deal with you know washing the dishes and why don't you you know it's like so yeah, yeah, yeah it's so fucking cool and and it's and it's and I could tell that they chose this route because Brad and Angelina Jolie are so gorgeous. And they actually pick two people in the story that kind of look like them in the beginning. And you'll see, you kind of see why. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it just is like, it's 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 insane how many famous people are in this. I don't want to give it away. because I didn't not, realize that was the case. I didn't realize it was going to be yeah, like it's, a... Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it, I, I, I could tell that Donald borrowed some people from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But then there's some surprises that I'm like, holy shit, why didn't they talk about this? This should have been a thing. But I will say one person I saw in the trailer that I have to mention. I think we're going through a Parker Posey sense. Oh, yeah. I, something is happening, man. Like she is she is everywhere that I look when it comes to like quality TV in movies and stuff like that. And yeah. she she has this cool part in it that is just like unforgettable and i think that they, this this show just really feels like something new and fresh and i think i'm kind of sad that it's on amazon prime if i'm being honest man like i i just don't like that are you being honest i just don't like that it doesn't hit it doesn't hit everybody the way that other networks hit people i i know people that follow it i know people that are, sub, are subscribed but i i need this a, a bigger audience to see this this show it's it's a special I, show. I don't I don't know why it's true that something being on Amazon Prime makes it feel a lot more lost than it is on another yeah. channel. But some of the other channels are pretty I mean channel. Some of the other streaming services <laughs> are pretty bad. I'm trying to think of what's the best one. They're all pretty bad as far as yes. like being able to get back to things. I feel like Hulu might be the one where I get the most visibility if there's something new yes. that that is out there. Uh-huh. Netflix is still still better than than Amazon. I go to Amazon Prime and I don't even get much of a sense of like the homepage. I don't know. I I can, I can totally see how Amazon Prime doesn't feel like as much of a of like a 
a provider of their own. Like it feels like a place to go find things, but it doesn't right. feel like it has as much of an identity as say the stuff that's on Hulu or the can, stuff that's uh, on Netflix. Can I tell you what it feels like? What? I'm sitting at a table talking to somebody about TV and they're like, holy shit, that sounds crazy. What network is it on? Mm -hmm. Is it on Netflix? No, no, no. Is it on Netflix is the first thing that they ask. Yeah. They say no. And it feels like the China the the the, yeah. the fucking the the tea <laughs> and I'm in get out and I'm falling down yeah. trying to describe <laughs> how good Amazon Prime is. It's fucking hopeless. Once you once somebody finds out that it's not on Netflix, they're done. Mm -hmm. People have no sense of exploration when it comes to uh, media because it's just they can find something decent enough on on Netflix. It bothers the shit out of me. Sorry, I feel like I want your love for Netflix continues. Yeah, my love for Netflix. Netflix. Um, okay, we're well, so gonna be going. To, you're gonna be going to Netflix soon for all your WWE Raw. I mean, I got a year. You got a year, but, but hey, it's they, coming. It's coming. And look, I think SmackDown's coming to Netflix too, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, in 2026, that's another. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me talk about a set of things that I purchased very recently. Uh, the Ray Redemption, uh, Gareth Evans personally advised this amazing 4K restoration of the Ray Redemption. The Ray Redemption, uh, I think the Blu ray came out 10 years ago, so we got a 10 year old uh version of this film, and then one that was released in 4K. It's clear, it's sharp, it has a 7.1 Dolby Atmos mix. So it's bassy. And I, I don't know if I talked to you guys about this. I just got a 15 inch, two 15 inch subwoofers to go with my 12 inch subs. So it is boom, 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 boom. I can't wait to play Dune on it. Oof. God damn. You guys got to come over. You, you guys got to get... add it to the calendar. Yeah, I got to send you a picture of my new, I got a new uh, sofa too. It's huge. Okay. Let's go. Here's the second, here's the second part. So um, um, physical media, somebody said something to me, physical media is dying. I spit in their face. I gave them the middle finger. That's a lie, you piece of shit. Because Arrow Video, a British uh, label that puts out fire, put out more releases last year than I think they had any previous years. And Barnes & Noble had a 50% off sale and then I go to go back to up there uh, to their expensive price because because of import prices. But let me show you three releases that I have that are absolutely stunning. The first, RoboCop. I buy that for a dollar. This is <laughs> gorgeous. How, how much is, did you buy that for a dollar? I didn't. <laughs> I bought this for thirty dollars. They're not cheap. That's the thing. You got it. That's you're inflation. Import. They're, you're, they're crazy inflation. And then um, and another Arrow video, Donnie Darko, one of my favorite films of all time. And, and typically, so think about it like this. Arrow video, labels like Arrow video are essentially, especially this one, like the criterion of indie releases. You know, they, they kind of collaborate with these um, companies that won't put out these releases. They just won't. They just, hey, what about RoboCop? I don't give a shit about RoboCop. Who's watching RoboCop? And then they make the definitive copy. <laughs> you know, it yeah, has like yeah. typically it will have like another disc with like interviews that haven't been seen. Um and uh tracks, mixes that you probably haven't heard before. And then the pictures is key. Like Arrow Video puts out monstrous hits. And then the last release that I want to talk about, The Warriors. Oh, this, nice. this is this is fucking gorgeous. I don't I don't know how they made this thing look like it looks like it came out yesterday. It's it's that clear of a film. Um it has a, the um it has the director's cut. Um it has an alternative cut and then it has the 4K remaster. Um these are all in 4K by the way. But the 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 bigger one the theatrical release. So it's, that's three different cuts. Yeah, three different cuts. That's that's 12Ks. That's tw that is 12Ks yeah. with Tons and tons and tons of of information, tons and tons and tons of documentaries. It's a really well 
thought out sort of thing. I think this comes with four discs. Um, Arrow Video putting out mm. heat. Barnes and Noble fifty percent off right now, so you can find and, and that includes new things. So Conan, if you, and, and if you go, make sure you use our referral code. Movies. Oh wait, we don't have a referral. Yeah, right. we need a referral Damn it. code. We really should. Damn we it. should have a yeah. referral code. With Barnes and Noble. Sure. That would be the right. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by uh, yeah, Arrow Video. Uh, yeah, never man. mind. <laughs> and and a fifty percent off deal is for new stuff too. Conan the Barbarian just came out in four K, uh, and that is included in the fifty percent off. So. You would typically pay seventy dollars for that release. Mm. It's now thirty five, and it is gorgeous. I hear. I'm I'm probably gonna get that next. Damn, so, that's a that's a crazy sale. Yeah, man. I sound like I sound like I work there. <laughs> yeah, I was like what what what's your take on this, Ronald? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Arrow. Do you have Do you have the True Romance? Uh, their True Romance release. No, I want it so bad. So I've been so I just okay. started like buying stuff like that, and I think that uh. I've been trying to find them in store. I don't, I hate ordering and having to wait. So I've been looking around <laughs> for a true romance locally, seeing mm. if I could buy one. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm on the lookout for true romance. I've um, always said that about you. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I you found you? it already, Ronald. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's in um, the other room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with my baby. Um, it. <laughs> but uh, my baby with my baby. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, Thank you for saying that because I was trying to think of other ones. You know which one I'm looking for? This is the last Arrow talk. The Candyman release. It's fuck it's like one of their earlier releases, and I can't find it anywhere. I tried to go. Is to that like the the older one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they have one and it's huh. it's like it, it's supposed to be gorgeous, uh, with a lot of uh so what they do is like, you know, the the voice, Candyman's voice, it's yeah. it's in the up. Up, it's in the upper speakers so when you're oh, hearing nice. it, it's like everything's here but then he's like come to me <laughs> so it's be like be my victim be my victim come to me be my There's also they also have a weird i'm looking at their list now again barnesandnoble.com era oh, video yeah, yeah. And also, uh they have a weird science one too I, i'd like to get that that one. one just came out pretty recently and that's supposed to be like fire like that's awesome yeah man it, it, arrow doesn't i might i might, I might grab those too yeah 50 percent off yeah and, and, and you see the regular price like yeah i would never buy i would never buy that for the <laughs> price. It, it would have to be a movie that you absolutely love you know what i mean yeah like, i mean even still 60 dollars for sixty dollars yeah a, but uh, but yeah, it's I don't know. like i said it's definitive it typically comes with a couple i understand versions i understand and, yeah so people typically will look out for these sales there's also a Criterion 50% off sale that comes for Barnes & Noble as well. So I'm probably the, the, the True Romance is in stock at the White Marsh Barnes & Noble if you want to get it, Ronald. It's there. I, I might do that, man. <laughs> $30, that's not bad. Yeah, no, that's good, man. That's a great deal. Yeah. yeah. And cool. our listeners got a great deal because this was supposed to be a quick episode. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we, we always provide value. Oh, no. Say. Honestly, when, whenever we have... Whenever we ha miss a week and we're trying to play catch up like this, it's like our ability to, uh, you know, uh, make it brisk goes out the window. But hopefully pe people got the bang for their buck in terms of a lot of cool recommendations. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll really make that true next next time because we're going to do our best movies of 2023. How do you how do you both feel about your list at this point? Have you do you already have a list that you that you. Yes, you 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 thought we were doing this tonight, right, Ronald? Yeah, so I did. You... <laughs> I did. I I think I just got a little punch drunk. I think I was just excited. And I get str I, I don't know if you guys feel like this, but like I lose like two pounds, three pounds, like a a, a, a couple of days before we record, just shitting in stress, just like absolutely stressed out about this list. Yeah, it's um. It's a pretty stressful thing. Yeah, it's true. It's like it, 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 has, it has no matter at all in the universe. Right. Not at all. But there, there is such an absolute feeling. Like I, I, I'm very protective of my top ten list. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm it, it, I, something about this to me is like this is gonna go in my grave one day, isn't it? Right. And and that's how I feel. And it's like it's not, Steve. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't stress out about this. Worry about other things that matter more. Mm. Um. And like my new chair. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to focus like that more on this year. I have a list. I've been managing all year on Letterbox. All I'm going to do is give that bad boy a once over once I see maybe one or two more things mm -hmm. and uh, just tidy it up and I'll be ready to go.
so stressful. Um, so yeah, next episode, next episode, which will be in two weeks. Um, I think that's it, guys. Uh, Moviesmovie.com website, as always, it's going nowhere. It'll always be there for you. Yeah. Um, if you want to go there, check out where we're available for um, subscribing. If you want to listen to the audio option, all the podcast platforms link right on the page, or you can just bookmark that page uh, and just listen to everything there every week or every episode uh, when they drop. Um, what's that? That's the sound of somebody bookmarking the page. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> yeah. uh, and if you want the video option, youtube.com slash movies for podcast. And if you do that, please make sure you click the subscribe and the bell icon to obviously subscribe and the bell means you will get a notification when a new video comes up simple as that let the technology work for you yes um is what our motto is <laughs> um that should actually be the description of the podcast movies yeah. movie let the technology work for you um but yeah we'll be back in a couple of weeks with the top 10 of 2023 episode and uh thank you so much for listening um and always you've made our day thanks